YouTube, what's going on guys? My name is Mike and I'm back with another video. And today we're gonna to be doing some spring cleaning. It's the end of March today and uh, it's beautiful out here. It's probably around 70, 75 degrees. And what we're gonna be doing is cleaning out the chicken coop. We're gonna be taking all the old bedding, all the dirty pooped bond bedding out of their, their chicken house and we're gonna be um, turning it into something super, super useful for gardening. We're gonna be turning it into the great rich garden material compost that I use for growing my plants. Now, I use, I try to use as much compost as I can make in my garden just because it's so rich. And uh, this is about 50% compost, 50% peat moss here. And I can't get enough of this stuff. So I try to tell my chickens to poop as much as they can. And I, they certainly uh, listen to me because they create a lot of poop. So let's go into the chicken coop and I'll show you what we're gonna be removing. All right guys, so we're here in the chicken house um, and this is pretty much where they spend the entire winter. They don't go outside too much. I mean, they go out and peck around a little bit, but in the winter time, they pretty much coop up, they stay warm and they, um, they create a lot of poop all over the floor. So what I do throughout the winter is I just continue to layer hay, they poop it all up, I put another layer of hay, they poop all that, another layer, and I kind of just keep building up and up. I'm standing on probably about six inches of, of um, chicken poop lasagna. Uh, and that's, that's what we're gonna be cleaning out today, and we're gonna make a nice big compost pile out of this, and it's gonna heat up really hot, and I'll show you guys how to do that. But first, we gotta get this chicken poop out. Now, if you guys have chickens or you're thinking about getting chickens, you do have to wear a mask. Um, you don't have to go crazy with a respirator, but you wanna wear um, just a, a regular dust mask because as you're cleaning this stuff, this stuff doesn't get wet in here. After they poop it out, it kinda just dries out and, um, and then it just, it, it just accumulates. Um, so it'll be a, a little bit dusty and you really don't wanna breathe chicken poop dust. As you can see, they're coming to see what the commotion's all about. Maybe a little bit of a snack too. So we will, uh, so we'll get started and I'll show you guys how I clean this stuff out. All right guys, I got all my PPE on. I'm all masked up. I hope you guys can hear me pretty well. I got some gloves on and I have the, the weapon of choice. Um, you know what, matter of fact, I might even use a smaller pitchfork than that. That one's a little bit cumbersome to move around throughout the, throughout this little tight chicken coop. So I'll use a smaller pitchfork for this. Uh, which is um, which should be pretty good now all I'm really doing is I'm just scooping this stuff out and I'm throwing it into that wheelbarrow so I'll speed it up for you guys so you don't have to sit through all this Okay guys, so we got, the, we got the chicken coop cleaned up pretty much for the most part. We can see the bottom, the, the original wood floor, which is great. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill this back in with some good straw and, um, and we're gonna let the, the chickens reacclimate to their nice clean home. Um, and then I'll take you guys out to the, the compost pile and I'll show you guys how we compost this stuff. Okay guys, so we have the chicken coop all finished up. Let's go out to the compost pile. All right guys, so here we are. We're back at the compost site. Um, this is my little three, three tier compost system. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to have two piles that going at all times. I like to have one that's semi-finished or almost finished, and then I like to make a new pile. What I'm gonna be doing is putting the, all this this new uh, material that we just pulled out of the chicken house here, 
I'm gonna put it in this center one. Uh, now this is gonna heat up really quick, guys. Probably about 48 hours, this will be up at 160 degrees, just because of how much chicken poop is really in this, all this straw. Now when we're talking about compost, we're talking about nitrogen, and we're talking about carbon. Uh, these two things, they create energy and they create heat. So it's all about a balancing act, a ratio here. Now chicken poop is, tends to be hot. I'm sure you guys have heard of that before. And what they mean by that is it has a, uh, it's high in nitrogen. So it tends to heat up really, really quickly. Um, now what we wanna do is we wanna give that heat something to burn. And that's where our carbon comes into play. And now what I have here is mostly uh, leaf litter. This is a partially, very little bit of chicken poop, but mostly I'd say 85% of this is just leaves from the fall. Now what I'm making here is what's called leaf mold. And, um, and it's on its way, but it moves a lot slower than traditional compost. So as you can see, it's working. This has been sitting like this all winter. And it's, you can still tell it's leaves. This, this, isn't, this is ne not nearly done yet, but this will be a great uh, carbon source to mix with our, our nitrogen source in the form of chicken poop here. So we're gonna take a little bit of this, maybe about 30% of this, and we're gonna mix it with about 70% 70, 70 of the, the chicken poop. And the way I like to monitor the heat, you really don't want compost to get too hot. Uh, so there's a, there's a sweet spot here. I would say between 110 and 140, 130 is the sweet spot. You don't want to get too hot because then you start to, to, to kill off a lot of the beneficial microbes that you want in the compost. You don't want it to be too cool because you want it to, to complete that compost. You want it to kill weed seeds, pathogens, um, things that you don't necessarily want in your garden. And the only way to get rid of that stuff is by heating it up. So there is a sweet spot and the way you manage that is you turn it. So once the compost gets to a certain point uh, in temperature, uh, let's call it 145. That's a little bit too hot. We don't want it to get too much higher than that. We'll come in, we'll turn it, we'll wet it down, and then we'll, we'll let it recoup. Now the wetting down process cools it down a lot and then it'll build back up to that 130, 140 range. Ideally it'll be 130 and we'll know it's almost done when the temperature starts to drop and it doesn't continue to go back up. So that's compost 101 guys. Let's get to mixing this stuff and layering it out. I'll show you how I do that. All right guys, so the way I do this is I put one layer down, I wet it with the hose, and then I put another layer down. Wet it with the hose and another layer, and I just keep stacking it up like lasagna. So here we go. This will be our first, our first layer here. All right. So the key in the watering part of this compost is you really, the moisture is what really activates everything. Microbes are aquatic creatures uh, and they really only, they only move and reproduce and eat and at, become really active in water. So you have to really make sure that you're giving them the right environment to um, to come to life and then also thrive. So you want to make sure you really wet down your compost pile uh, and frequently as well. Now there's a, there's a balancing act here as well, like most things. You don't want it to be too wet because then you create what's called anaerobic conditions. And that's when your compost pile gets stinky. And you'll know when it gets stinky. It'll smell like, uh, it'll smell like ammonia. Um, or sulfur, or the, a lot of the, the smells that you would get, rotten eggs, rotten milk, things like that. And you really don't want that. But there's a way to remedy that. Once your pile goes anaerobic, you can mix it, open it up, and not add water. Let it dry out a little bit. Okay, now we'll add some carbon. We'll do, add some leaves. And then some more chicken manure. And 
and some more water. And we'll keep the process going. All right guys, so that's really it as far as uh, the methodology behind making the compost pile. You just wanna keep on making layers. So a layer of nitrogen in a chick manure, a layer of carbon, leaves, leaf mold, leaf mold um, and then water. A layer of nitrogen, layer of carbon, water. And you just wanna keep stacking up. So I'll speed this up for you guys now so you don't have to sit here and watch this grueling task. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right guys, so that's it. We have the pile all put up. We did our lasagna technique where we put greens, browns, greens, browns, greens, browns, or nitrogen, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, nitrogen, carbon. So we, we mix where we, we have our layers in place. I cleaned up the bottom here, just uh, put the stuff on the bottom on top so we have a nice mass, um, a, a good tall mass. What you want is it to be nice and tall and you want it to be wide as well. Uh, kind of like the shape of a volcano, if you can imagine that. That's what we're looking for. Um, so the last piece to the puzzle here is we have to insert our thermometer. Now this thermometer is, I believe, 24 inches. Um, it might be three feet. I think it's 24 inches, two feet. So. As you can see the dial here, if you guys can see that, it's measured in Fahrenheit. For all my European friends and Canadian friends, you would have to pick one up that reads in Celsius. But this one uh, is Fahrenheit. And our ideal range, I'm not sure if you can see that, is between 90 or 100 is, is where we want it, between 130. So 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 130 degrees Fahrenheit is our perfect range. 140 is a little bit hot. We do want it to get to 140 to 150 for at least a couple days. And I'll monitor this every day. I'll come and take a look, but we're really just gonna insert this thing 
right into the pile there. There we go, nice and deep. Right into the middle, we want the, the probe to be in the center mass of the pile. Um, and this is for reference, reading at 60 degrees right now. And in a couple of days, we'll see that shoot right up to maybe 130, 140, so. All right, guys, we'll check back. All right, guys, we are back. It's, a it's the very next day. And as you can see, you guys can get a reading on that. We are about 125, 125 degrees. So this thing heated up significantly overnight. And we even had a little bit of rain today, which typically cools down a pile. But um, yeah, no, this is just a, a little short update. Um, the pile definitely heat, heated up overnight. It's definitely warm in there. We're probably gonna see it go all the way up to maybe 140 by tomorrow. And then I'll go ahead and I'll turn it. Um, and I'll turn it every day. Every time it exceeds 135 to 140, I'll turn it. And that's my indicator, not indicator on when to turn. Now, if you guys don't have a thermometer, you don't necessarily need it. You can go ahead and kind of move the pile aside. And if you start to see steam bellowing out of the top of it, and it's real hot in there, almost too hot for the touch, then you can go ahead and determine that it's time to turn it. Um, and then also, as far as the moisture, I'm not sure if I'll add moisture or water to the pile i'll really uh, once i start flipping it and seeing how wet things are in there i might add water i might add, not add water i might just add a little bit of water so we'll see but yeah guys just a short little update um and i will see you on the next one All right guys, so we're back. Today is day three, and this small little pile here got to 160 degrees. So that's a little hotter than I wanted it to get, but I wasn't able to check it, and here we are now. So it's time to turn this thing. Uh, we have to turn it. We might even have to add some water to cool it down, and then it's gonna heat back up. So let's get into it. Let's turn this thing. So the key to turning the pile is you wanna to try to get all of the outside to the middle, and all of the middle to the outside. So. Um, as I turn this, I'm going to try to just go, just pull the material from along the outside here and in the front here and kind of pile that toward the middle of this new pile. That's the goal, guys. We want to try to get everything evenly broken down. And also, another tip, try to break up some clumps as you see them. Any, cl any clumps that you see, just try to work work it with your pitchfork and break them up any dry spots you see try to add with add a little bit of water don't forget the water is the magic of this process All right guys, so that's it. We moved from, from one box to the next box. And uh, that's really all it is for turning. So we'll let this sit for another day or two and we'll check back in. See you soon. Real quick guys, I just had to add, I, uh, I just literally put this thing in. I walked away to go wrap the hose up and I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's already shot right back up to 110 about 110 degrees so it was at one just at 160 when we first flipped it so we added a little bit of water we turned the pile and now it's right back into that perfect range where we want it um, i'd love to see it go up to about 130 131 that's the range that's going to be killing off any kind of pathogenic uh, creatures or um, diseases or weed seeds or things that you don't necessarily want in your compost but man it only took a couple minutes and we're right back to 110. So that's a great sign, guys. We have an active pile here. All right, I'll check in with you guys later. All right, guys, today is day four, I believe. Uh, it's the very next day and we need to turn this pile. It was already at 160. Um, this thing's heating up pretty quick. 
So I'm gonna turn it from this over to here. I already started a little bit and I'll let it sit. So we'll check back in next time. All right guys, today is day six. And as you can see, our pile here is uh, it's starting to break down. It's definitely changing in color. It's shrunk down a little bit. We are sitting at a steady, uh, you know, one, one, about 137, I'd say. Close to 140. So we are right in range. This is exactly where we want to be, right at the hot range. We are killing off pathogens and, and diseases and seeds right now at this temperature. So we'll check back in and see if we need to turn this thing. Don't forget, we're turning at one, any, anything over 140, 145. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, the end of day seven. There she is. Tomorrow starts the new week of this pile. And uh, it's doing really good. I'm really happy with that. Okay guys, so I just turned it. Today's day eight. I turned it from there into here. And as you can see, the pile is, it's getting there. It's slowing down a little bit. It was only at 110 before I turned it. Whereas it was like at 140, 160 the previous day. So in about a week after I turn it, we should have almost complete compost. But we'll see you guys. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the end of day nine. I just turned the pile. Uh, the, the temperature was at 90 degrees before I turned it. So it was a little bit dry in there. I added some water and uh, I'm gonna put the thermometer back in and we'll let it sit for another day or two. As you can see, the pile is definitely uh, turning into what looks like a traditional compost. Still has a ways to go. I'm thinking another week and we might be finished on this. So I will check in again. All right, guys, it's getting kind of dark here, but uh, today is day 11. I just turned the pile, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's really breaking down. Today's day 12, guys. I'm not gonna be turning the pile just today. Uh, we are sitting at just under 100 degrees, about 90 degrees right here. Um, so we're gonna let this cook for another day, come back tomorrow, we'll wet this thing down and turn it over or other way around turn it and then wet it all right guys okay guys today is day 14 i just turned the pile over and as you can see we're already at 80 degrees it's probably about 55 ambient temperature today and uh we're almost done with this pile uh, probably probably usable right now if you really needed to to use it in your garden but um I'll probably give it another day, two days, maybe, maybe four. I'll probably give it another two days or two turns and then I'll call it good to use. Now, I don't necessarily need to use this pile right away, but I will, um, I will use it uh, for compost teas and um, just top dressing plants and different things around the yard. So at this point, 14 days, you can turn a hot, pile into a complete pile so that's it guys take care all right guys so it's been a little while since i actually turned this pile since day 14. um so basically what i did was on day 14 i turned it i wet it down i did the whole thing and i just let it sit uh probably for about a month so what that did was it essentially allowed the pile it was i would consider it complete at that point it wasn't heating up anymore um, i could have taken this pile and spread it over my garden or my lawn or i could have done anything i could do with compost at that point but I, I didn't need it yet so i figured let me just let this sit and let the fungal properties actually really develop and pick up um, and when you don't turn the pile so much you really let that mycelium of the fungi kind of establish itself and grow out and um, and then it'll start to fruit create fruiting bodies or what we call mushrooms um, and I actually have saw some really cool ones in here I'll put some pictures in um, as I'm talking about this but basically I just let it sit and I didn't do anything to it now today I turned it wet it down and you're seeing the final product um, of that right now so 
that's really it to it guys that's composting in a nutshell uh, it's really low maintenance if you get busy on your property and you can't get to your pile you can't turn it just let it sit it's only going to get better and better as long as it's not too wet it'll uh it'll it'll just do its thing and and you'll be able to use it whenever you're ready so that's really it guys you can't mess it up there's a couple of principles you have to follow uh if you get those down you're good to go so but all right guys don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and if you made it to this far in the video all the way to the end, you get a gold star. Um, go ahead and hit me in the comments and let me know what you thought about this video, what I can do to improve, um, or if you want to see more stuff like this. This was the first time I've ever really done a uh, multi-day or multi-week video, so um, let me know how you, what you guys think, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.